Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, we once again ride the waves as we cruise alongside the Marine Megalosaur. Thank you to Nathan Comics Productions 466 for today's topic, the Eustreptospondylus. The earliest remains of Eustreptospondylus date back to 1870 in the modern-day country of England, specifically the summer town Brick Pit, north of the city of Oxford. This original fossil was recovered by a team of excavators working at this pit, which was then acquired by, of all things, a bookseller by the name of James Parker. For a more non-literary analysis of these bones, Parker would pass off these remains to Oxford professor John Phillips to help identify and better describe the bones. Phillips would do just that, describing the bones in a paper and acknowledging that this original specimen may be the most complete large theropod fossil of the time. Despite this, he would not assign these fossils to any genus. As for choosing what to name this specimen, it would not be an easy decision. In 1890, paleontologist Arthur S. Woodward would suggest assigning this creature to a species of, what do you expect, Megalosaurus, being grouped into the existing species, Bucklandi. Because it was the 1800s, and if it looked like a dinosaur and had sharp teeth, odds are it was getting assigned to Megalosaurus. However, in 1905, Paleontologist Franz Nopska noted how the skeletal makeup of this fossil was very similar to another identified large carnivore, the Streptospondylus. So Nopska suggested this fossil belonged to this genus instead. But this answer was not exactly satisfactory either, as some did not agree with this reclassification and instead continued to refer to these remains as a Megalosaurus splitting the scientific field. Furthermore, the only remains of Streptospondylus by this point were extremely fragmentary, making a true comparison between the two difficult. So, to settle the debate, paleontologist Alec D. Walker would erect a new genus for the fossil, naming the creature Eustreptospondylus oxoniensis. This name would end up sticking around, but the genus as a whole has seen a fair bit of change over the following decades. And by comparison, none of these changes would be nearly as sticky. For example, a new species called Divizensis would be added to the genus by Walker in the same paper, but would later be split off into its own genus in 1977, named the Pivetusaurus. Another megalosaur, the Magnosaurus, was also being considered synonymous to Eustreptospondylus, but this conclusion has been rejected due to their differing jaw structure, and thus Magnosaurus is instead often recognized as a distinct megalosaur. Interestingly, Eustreptospondylus actually has two translations, one direct and one that references a different genus. In this case, U translates to true, and Streptospondylus was meant to refer to the genus of dinosaur Eustreptospondylus was meant to be added to. This name refers to how Eustreptospondylus was a true, more complete genus of the more vague Streptospondylus, although the two have rarely been suggested as the same genus since, despite their similarities. The direct translation further breaks down this genus name into Greek, to include strepto, meaning twisted or reversed, as well as spondylus, meaning vertebrae, having the direct translation of the name be turned vertebrae. This name references the arrangement of vertebrae in Eustreptospondylus and Streptospondylus' back, being opisthocelus rather than the more common Procelus, seen among many other dinosaurs. Two fancy words that are best explained with this picture here. See, 
reversed, just like the name. Despite its separation from the Megalosaurus genus, Eustreptospondylus is still considered a member of the same family, the Megalosauridae. While sometimes contested as a true family, the Megalosaurs are considered the first large theropods to roam the Earth, with their earliest members first appearing in the early to mid-Jurassic, almost 170 million years ago. Besides some very specific skeletal differences, they are most easily identified for their long skulls with an average height to length ratio of 3 to 1. Some of their members include the powerful Afrovenator, as well as previous Dinobasic century Torvosaurus. The original, nearly complete specimen of Eustreptospondylus was believed not to be fully grown, so an accurate full size is difficult to determine. Many estimates consider the creature to be an average-sized theropod, measuring 20 feet or 6 meters in length, and standing about 2 meters or 6 feet tall. At this size, it was believed to only weigh approximately half a ton. The jaws of Eustreptospondylus were quite long and slender, with the entire skull measuring nearly 2 feet or half a meter in total. Despite its fairly complete skull, no teeth have been preserved for this creature, although it can be inferred based on fragments and tooth cavity positioning that they were positioned backwards and serrated along their edges, providing them with the opportunity to easily cut into the flesh of victims and hold on with excellent grip. Besides a few unique skeletal features, the Eustreptospondylus had a fairly typical build for its family, sporting a long, slender body ending in a thin tail, slim yet powerful hind limbs, as well as fairly developed forelimbs, especially compared to later, larger theropods. The namesake difference for this creature, their rotated vertebrae, is quite unique among other dinosaurs, and is actually most commonly seen in modern salamanders. Definitive reasoning for the speciality is limited, but was possibly an adaptation to increase stability in between vertebrae to aid in swimming. Speaking of, one of the defining characteristics of Eustreptospondylus was its believed aquatic lifestyle. Fossils of Eustreptospondylus were discovered in an area that was known to have been an island during the late Jurassic. Due to this, many scientists believe this showed that Eustreptospondylus would be an island-hopping hunter, swimming from island to island to search for prey or rest after swimming long distances. This lifestyle is actually seen in modern animals like the Komodo dragon, which would swim between the Komodo islands searching for land-dwelling prey like goats and buffalo. However, some scientists still contest this belief believing the body type of Eustreptospondylus lacked enough unique characteristics to justify this conclusion, and instead, the remains on a known island was accidental, either being marooned on the island or having its corpse wash ashore during a storm. Eustreptospondylus would have lived during the late Jurassic between 163 and 154 million years ago. Fossil evidence indicates this creature would have lived in modern-day southern England, but depending on its aquatic abilities, it is possible it could have reached other areas of the British Isles and possibly mainland Europe. The island-hopping lifestyle would have been necessary, as during this time, Europe was composed of hundreds of islands varying in size and divided by shallow seas and deeper ocean waterways. Eusheptospondylus would have been a medium-sized carnivore, outsizing smaller predators like the Dracoraptor, but still competing with other larger carnivores, including the Metrian Canthosaurus. It is likely Eustreptospondylus would hunt medium-sized herbivores like the early Iguanodontid Camptosaurus, as well as various pterosaurs that flew over the prehistoric oceans. It is also likely Streptospondylus would scavenge the beaches of various islands, searching for washed-up carcasses from fish, 
marine reptiles, or land-dwelling animals that had drowned. Despite its unique lifestyle, Eusheptospondylus has struggled to make an impact on modern media, appearing in almost no modern projects of any form. Despite this, one of its only roles would be a significant one, landing an appearance in the groundbreaking documentary 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs, where this creature would actually have quite the story arc, starting off as an underdog before moving to the big city and... Uh, oh, he's dead now. Uh, in all seriousness, it would actually appear a few more times in the show. The Eustreptospondylus was possibly one of the most unique hunters of its time, willing to brave the waves and conquer the water millions of years before the Spinosaurs would call this environment home. While a menace in the water, its ferocity on land is nothing to overlook, more than capable of challenging some of the largest predators of its time. It's been ignored for long enough. I'd give it a second thought before... You strip this creature of the respect it deserves. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what do you think of Eustreptospondylus, and who you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I think we can add this dinosaur to our list of ridiculously obscure ones, right alongside Pegomastax and Bistahevrosaur. Safe to say, that list is only going to get longer. Next week, we'll be covering something a bit more well-known, as we explore the basics on the conniving Utah Raptor. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.